<laughs> Hi, I'm Meg McDonald. I'm your impromptu moderator for the session, and I'm about to learn what third row fandom is. I have an increasing sneaky suspicion. <laughs> and I'm going to pass you over to Emily. Hello, I am Emily January, and one day in uh, 2004, I sat in the third row. <laughs> My name is Neil Harrison, and hey. on this. <laughs> and on the same day in 2004, I also sat in the third row. Uh, I'm John Coxon, and I didn't. <laughs> I'm Abigail Nussbaum. I was also not in that third row. Uh, what actually happened is that, like several people in this group, Neil Harrison sort of hooked me into it with a large uh, comedic uh, stage hook. <laughs> <laughs> Meg does not know what is on the slide. So Meg has several times during the weekend asked me, what is Third Row Fandom and what's that panel about? And then when Claire went down with COVID, she asked again at breakfast and I was like, you will find out when you moderate. And then Meg uh, is not very good at saying no. So then Meg is here. <laughs> Thanks, Meg. I have, a, I have a feeling I could have ended up in a third row at some point, <laughs> if this is how it goes. At any point, do I do I advance the slides? I think you just advance and then occasionally pause for explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Explain. Explain. <laughs> well, the, the 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 slides provide a history of third row fandom with illustrations. Uh, and not not in fact by Kim Simonson, but by Martin Petto, who is a a member of the group who is not here, but who made the slides. We miss him. We do. So, like great tales, <laughs> it starts once upon a 2004. Ish. Time. <laughs> In a place of open and wonderful learning. <laughs> This is Martin trolling those of us who were in the Oxford University speculative fiction group, which includes several members of the audience. Um, Raise your hands if you were in the Open University speculative no, fiction no, group. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, yeah, like I said, sorry. It's, I look at the... Yes, Martin is, is trolling. There are hand cues of us. So these, these are the people who were in the Oxford University Speculative Fiction Group along with me. So we have Ruth, we have Ian, uh, we had Jo, but she already went home with COVID because that is apparently a thing, still, somehow. Uh, and Jean lives in Australia now, so is not here, sadly, and Tom rarely comes to conventions. But we all were of a similar generation in the Oxford University Speculative Fiction Group and started going to conventions around about the turn of the century. Which I phrase deliberately in, you know, make I've it sound ancient and wizened. I very really nearly asked which century, but it's fine. <laughs> Thank you for resisting. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> so a different subset of people. Uh huh were in Angel and Buffy fandom on the news group UK Media TV Angel. And if you go to the next slide, you can see who's in that group. Note the presence of Neil on both slides. This will be a recurring theme. <laughs> so we have Liz, who is there. We had Dan. Hi, who, Liz. Hi, Liz. We had Dan, who was here on Friday and interviewed me. We had Tim, who turned up for dinner on Friday, but did not turn up for anything else. Snacker. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, well. So? He lives in Birmingham. He could, you know, manage a day. Hell, what? He lives in Birmingham? Yes, he's just down. Yeah. Dan. <laughs> yeah. And Dan Melvin, who is, and his partner Aileen, who pushed, you're probably on this slide as well, actually. I think he posted. Um, 
were on the news group with a bunch of other people, but again, stayed in touch after Angel ended and started going to conventions, most of us, and doing things online. I think that's called a support group. Yeah. And, and Alex and Andrew Hogg, who is in the audience. Okay, blame Martin for leaving Andrew off. No, Sorry, Andrew. He's there. there. You just need to. Oh, do I need to? You, you need to. Oh, there's a whole row that you couldn't see. <laughs> it's the third row. <laughs> it, it has also, important, Ian Clark is on that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hugo Award, is he no. won yet or nominated? We'll get there. BSFA nominated award artist. Winning. Yes. BFSA winning. Yes. And Glasgow Convention Artist. The best. Yes, his there. postcards are on the table in the dealers room. They are lovely. And if you haven't yet got your membership, please <laughs> do. Okay. So I've had some friends. <laughs> I'm not sure if I do after this panel. <laughs> With friends like those. <laughs> okay. Ta-da! So all those people got together and made a baby. That's interesting. There's movies about that. And it's called the third row. Yes, and that's explained on the next couple of slides. So this is, this is the overlap that was the original, or closest to the original third row. There's a bit just like the Oh, there. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, okay. is, is this yeah. a point where we tell the actual story of... So I'm going to tell my perspective on it. So I was at my first EasterCon in 2004. I was... 15, and there was a future of fandom panel, which I went to into a bit late, maybe, you know, maybe at least 15 minutes, maybe, you know, more so than that late. And I sat down, and it was quite, you know, they were taking questions, and at one point, I put my hand up to ask something, and they said, you know, oh, the... And probably, it was 2004, probably the young woman in the third row, and everybody laughed. <laughs> And I didn't understand why, uh, but then I understood that the rest of that lot had also been sitting in the third row asking lots of questions. And so it became that, you know, all of the young people uh, of fandom were there. And yes, they said, you know, this is the future of fandom. And we took it as a challenge. And then there was a, and then there was a standing ovation. And Everybody confetti. clapped. I, I don't remember that. But tell the myth, not the, <laughs> not the history. Well, I, I wasn't there. Yeah, so what have you heard? Um, well, basically, I came into fandom in 2000. My first East Call was 2007. And because I am about the same age as, like, Emily and Anna and, and other people, and, and maybe slightly younger than you, but, but only by a couple of years, <laughs> people would very often assume I was in the third row on account of how um, ageism is rife. <laughs> And then eventually I was by sort of osmosis. So that was good. Sort of Katamari. Kind yes. Of, yeah. I remember the fateful day I was added to the mailing list. <laughs> I, re I remember the fateful day where I said, well, I've heard you said you didn't want to be on the mailing list. And you said, no, I didn't. <laughs> no, one, no one had asked. <laughs> we had a mailing list. We still do have a mailing list. Technically. It's just it's not very high traffic anymore. <laughs> Abigail, what was your perception as someone who knew the rest of that lot when they went? Well, the con? thing is, again, that I, I came into this because I had a blog, and one day, out of the blue, Neil emails me and says, hello, would you like to hear a review for Strange Horizons? And that was, you know, my first experience of that. And then I realized that this was a guy who had written about me on his live journal, and as a result, my blog now had ten times the amount of traffic it had before. <laughs> So, you know, I was already inclined to say yes, but this was pretty cool. So I go into his live journal, and there's this large group of people, and, you know, before I know it, I'm in this large group of people. Uh, and I, I guess it was just a couple of months later that I was visiting a friend in the UK. So I, I emailed him, and I said, hey, do you want to meet up? Uh, and he came up to Oxford, and we met. Um, and, and, you know, that was it. That was it. I was in the group. You know, I didn't didn't sort of make a choice, it was just it happened, and I'm not, sorry, but <laughs> it, it is continually you a You didn't get a choice, so, yeah. Yeah. I'd, yeah, we haven't, I think the live journal part of this is quite important, because that is how I think the, no, you don't have to advance just yet. 
Um, I think that's how some of the overlap started to happen. Not you and Anna so much, because well, you won't well, yeah, well, this was and there is a there is a, a long and proud tradition of social media that eventually being en ends up being owned by the Russians being very important <laughs> to fandom. Um, and Live Journal was really the, the the early adopter of that. Well, quite quite recently, you and then a few week a few weeks later, I both had a twenty year email from Live Journal, oh. and it made me think about the fact that. I met you at that con and then met you again um, at the, well, actually, the, the day before, like just before we all left for the Glasgow World Con, Jonathan Coulton did a gig in Camden and we used the fact that we had met you at a convention a year and a half earlier to skip about 200 metres of queue. <laughs> um, and I didn't follow any of you on Live Journal. It's such a weird thing to think. I could have done it just you know didn't yeah. really occur to me well, I, um, I didn't realize that I was in this picture earlier than I thought because I was also at that gig in Camden hey! yeah but I, I was there with other Fanish people oh. yeah I, I mean I yeah Jonathan Colton's quite popular in our circle <laughs> yes um, yeah and and for a long time I was much more adjacent and my sister was on there. Here we are as babies. No beards in these photos. <laughs> this is this is the sandwich panel. So this this is the sandwich panel. So this was the 2005 Glasgow Worldcon, where by this point several of us had become involved in various aspects of Finnish activity. Jean Melzak and I had been yanked in to help with some aspects of program by. Farah Mendelssohn and working with Claire Bradley and Mark Plummer as well. And through that, we ended up putting essentially a, a Fanish item on the programme based on a conversation which we have frequently returned to in the years since, I think it's, it's fair to say. Uh, the panel was called The Algebraist, Scottish panel, Scottish reference. Uh, and the core debate at the heart of this panel is a very important one, which is if you have I'm going to mess up the canonical form now. Now I'm live on stage. If you have two slices of bread and some ham and cheese, and you arrange them with a slice of bread, some ham, some cheese, a slice of bread, and then you take a knife and you chop it, do you have one sandwich or two sandwiches? Two. That will be the rest of the panel. So <laughs> I say one, but my my sandwich has no ham in it. <laughs> it's it's turkey ham. Okay, fair. No, wait, no, still, that do still doesn't work. <laughs> Cheese sandwich, then. Okay. What about the dairy-free people? <laughs> I can't remember what... A filling of your choice, John. <laughs> we can have a variety of fillings to cater for different, different tastes and requirements. I was going to say mixed ones. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> what a non-secretaire, but what a brilliant one. <laughs> No, I just wanted to say, like, there will be a time when we look at... So, one person, I can't, but I can't remember what she said, one person in the audience, when we, were, when we opened for questions and comments, one person infamously stood up and offered their opinion as a professional baker. <laughs> but I can't remember which side she took. Can anyone else? No. no. None of the audience can remember. If we knew the answer, it wouldn't be a fun debate. Yeah, that's true. The, I mean, I know the answer. It is an unresolvable. The, the, the main thing I remember uh, was the suggestion that it should be called a cucumber butty. <laughs> Which is, incidentally, uh, Liz's burlesque name. <laughs> when you look back... Now, this is... Yes. Our esteemed guest of honour, Neil Harris. <laughs> Do you, think, do you think there will be a point where you look back at photos of this panel and you feel like we were as young now as you were in that sandwich panel photo? Yes, that, that is how time works, John. <laughs> I mean, hopefully, yes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but yeah, so Neil, Neil, if you've ever had Neil in your house, you will notice two things, which is firstly, Neil is quite... Neil will make your house look smaller than it usually does. <laughs> Um, Nick is a fan of tiny things, and I pointed out that that meant that Nick dating Neil was, was slightly 
off-brand. Yes, but then I realised that you make everything else in her life look slightly tinier, <laughs> and actually the net effect is, is far towards the tiny. But basically, Neil will collide with lights, yeah. and then you get excellent gifts like this one, <laughs> which is amazing. And stickers. And stickers. And, stickers, um, and this, this is yeah. in Tim Phipps' house, which is just down the road, as we established earlier. Yes. So we could go on a field trip. <gasps> All turn up. Can we please take everyone to Tim and Dan's house and just be like, hi! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, and, and the reason Claire Briley was going to moderate this before uh, she got ill is because, along with uh, Greg's pick of skill and some others, she was on that Future of Fandom panel all that time ago, and yes, Greg Pickerskill is the one who anointed the third row, the Future of Fandom. Before we move on to the next slide, do we have any reactions from the Discord yet? Um, uh, hang on. I mean, probably a lot of gifts. We have some questions, we have some comments. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, this, is, this is very much a, a comment rather than question kind of panel, isn't it? So. I think so, yeah. And the ro can the roving mic be turned on? Tech is moving. Yes. Hello? Hello? Not on yet. No, the ye yellow, yellow one. Yellow one. Oh, Hello? Hey. I, I had the mute button on. Sorry. Oh. Um, so we, we have some comments from the audience. Um, uh, Mark Plummer, fan historian, researcher, extraordinaire, uh, says that also present in the literal third row was Peter Maybe, who was then about 78. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. I mean, you know, he is, he is in the third row, but he never responds to our calls. <laughs> He's 97 now. <laughs> uh, and Claire also uh, fills in that the other member of the panel was Fran Dowd. Yes. And that most, if not all, of the panel are older now than I was on the panel in 2004. Yes. Everyone yes, that's a, yes. Yeah. Thank you for that fact. Uh, and also, Once again, this well, is how time works. <laughs> <laughs> me, and, me, and, me and John are, you know, within a, a, a few weeks of age, so it's either sort of, of the third row members, half and half for all of us. That's the shout, shout out to Mark Plummer, though, because he did some research before this panel. Mark uh, Plummer! <laughs> Mark Plummer? <laughs> Team America World Police, except with Mark Plummer rather than that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he did some research for this panel. He made it, it, very thorough research, because he obviously went back over Live Journal and tracked down discussions between some of us before we went to this EasterCon about our plans to go to the Future of Fandom panel at EasterCon. Um, little did you know. Little did you know. If someone can, in the audience who received that document, can find some of the quotes from it and post it in the Discord, that would be quite fun because there's also comments from Tom explaining his version of who the third row are and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think in fact, Claire will have the document, and Mark will have the document because they're watching. So, yeah. <laughs> I think Please post the, that information in the Discord. They're watching, they're 90 seconds behind us from the stream. Okay, oh, well, right, we'll we'll just, they're 90 seconds behind us we'll come back to this point. Stream. So, I, I was at the post office. No, um, so, um, but the, the thing that it made me slightly um, sad, because what made it clear is how ready, like, there is an alternate universe in which Tom is the next Mark Plummer, because he really had the makings of a, of a budding fan historian, and now... Now he's a, uh, I would describe him as an eminent shit poster. <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of the very best. But, um, if you, if you but there is an alternate reality where he is, uh, he is an eminent fan historian, and that would have been very good. Yeah, you want to see some true shit posting, it's Tom who is, uh, Tom who is contrary yeah. on, on Twitter absolute. and such. <laughs> I take no responsibility for anything you may find. <laughs> I don't think he does. I think, <laughs> I think it's responsibility-less. That's good. Could I? <laughs> so, Meg, how, how are you finding... Is, is this explaining? Is this good? Uh-huh. <laughs> so, so to, to contextualise, I've also opened up the Discord so I can check at the same time. Um, and it, it, it's, it's not helping. <laughs> I mean, good. it is. It explains a lot. <laughs> um, but not in a linear historical sense. No. But, but that's how time works. And that's what I'm struggling with. Jeremy Berrimi. Yeah. Why I do like is um, that the next world con, there are, I'm going to have ribbons that say, but that's how time works. <laughs> and that's going to be good. Uh, what? I just want to. Oh. 
Is it all right if I have a quick comment? <laughs> I was going to say the next World Con, which is in Glasgow. Yes. So I'm just wondering whether or not there needs to be a program in, item, the next World Con. There is one the, in China first. Yeah, the next, next World Con uh, that is a year after the Easter Con, on which you have a panel where you talk about the future of fandom. Yeah. Because okay. wasn't it that you said that it was the year before? Oh, I see. Yes. It was, yeah, yeah 2004. I'm yes. trying to follow time working. Yeah. It's hard. 2004 Easter Con, to the 2005 bread panel, yeah. so you are correct. This panel, this obviously, is, yeah. yeah. It's been known to happen. Um, that there should, be a, there should be a sandwich panel? Is this something we should propose to program? We'll just add a, we'll just add a Hugo category. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone will still argue about it. I, I do think... Just like the Hugos. Yeah. Th this, this is missing a, a, a Scottish slide, um, and we don't, we don't have, so uh, yes, we are, we are missing that um, aspect, and indeed, um, I think some of them studied together, yes. oh, which guest actually of honor. is a we whole a other branch that we didn't guest of honor, Karen we have Sparing cover. Has hands a, going up in the audience, so Nick question. has the microphone and we'll talk, and yeah, then Carrie I, behind you has a hand up. Oh, so. wait, I'm rude and I didn't put my hand up. Um, I was just wanted to interject, so Abigail, if you want it to be a Hugo category, does that mean you're volunteering to go to the business meeting? <laughs> <laughs> in China. <laughs> I'm sure we could we could deputise someone for such an important uh, category. Really, I do feel uh, as a Scottish Wellcon, and I I must endorse this move towards recognising the importance in SF of the sandwich, which I feel is critically underrepresented. But I, it is a Scottish uh, Wellcon with uh, in a tradition that was largely begun by Americans. So the sandwiches in question should all, in fact, be fried. <laughs> Oh, be very glad Esther is not here. <laughs> no, no, see, the question is not that, is that the sausages will all be square. Yes. Never mind this. Bloody love square sausage. Doesn't have to be fried, but the sausage has to be square. Shall we, shall we do some more slides? We, we can yeah. do the next three relatively quickly because I think it's <laughs> yep. adding people. So keep progressing a little bit. And there we go, and fill, it, fill in some more gaps. So when we get to the full screen, Whoa. so this, this, even this is not, I would say, a complete yeah. listing. This is, because this is what fits on a, fi on a five by five grid, five by five grid. Yep. Um, five by five. In order to <laughs> illustrate over the remainder of the panel some areas in which people have become involved. But there's lots of other. You can, you can slice people. this up very, in many different ways. Um, and we miss, we miss Chance. Yeah, Chance Morrison, top right corner. Um, well, well, do that at the end. There's a, yeah. Sadly, no longer with us, but. Hey. So this is the selection who are, or at least were here for some of it. And it, and it, yeah. makes, it makes the letters ick. <laughs> <laughs> it makes the letters ick? That's what I sort of. Ig, ig, ig. Oh, I see. Ig, yeah. <laughs> We're I very ig noble. <laughs> and no. I feel partly responsible <laughs> for this. Oh no. <laughs> so well, I would like. I mean, if everyone could start chanting Neil at some point in the panel, that would be good because he is the king of the third row. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that yet. <laughs> Neil doesn't like it when you chant his name. But a couple of people came a very long way. So. Liz and Abigail, I mean, I don't think you came entirely for me. You came to see many other people as well, but thank you. So, uh, This is my first Easter Con in, in 13 years. Um, oh, you Christ. <laughs> you may have had something to do with it. Yeah, that, that, really is how time, that really just is how time tad. works. Blimey, okay. 30. Right. Speaking of taking over the world, yes. yes. Um, Liz is here because of peer pressure. Yes. And if so you want to hear more, a little bit more serious now, because we look at some of the things that we, some of us have done. I think that that's a, that's a good, that's a good part. But we had just from from the original moderator, who was obviously uh, much more prepared. Um, Claire has pointed out for the program item to work for Glasgow in perfect synchronicity, 
Um, there needs to be enough young people in the audience right now to be the disruptors. <laughs> oh, you can. Um, so, if, but that could also be virtually. So we could have the virtual third row disruptors. So they might need to, those watching online identify yourselves for the future future disrupting of the sandwich panel. And now to the serious business. Uh, Slightly serious. If, if we wanted more young people here, it wouldn't have been at 10.30 a.m. on Monday. <laughs> but if, you, if you're watching, good for you. <laughs> I did, on one panel I was on, I did um, include a aside to Liz for when she's watching on Catch Up. <laughs> Do you want to reveal which panel that was? Just going to make no, I, watch? Want, I want Liz to have to watch all of them. <laughs> okay. So some of us got involved in the BSFA. Um, Jean and I uh, did Vector for a few years. Uh, Liz helped with production on Vector. Martin helped with reviews editing of Vector. Ian was a treasurer for a while. Uh, and awards administrator. I just think he's a treasurer, a natural treasurer. <laughs> Awards administrator. Um, anyone else on that one? And I think if you go to then the next one, we have Strange Horizon stuff. So I was reviews editor there and later editor in chief. And I, as Abigail mentioned, yanked her in against her will. Very kind of sorry. Um, I'm, not, I'm not complaining. But she was also reviews editor at Strange Horizons after me. And Dan, along with Maureen Kin Kincaid Spella and Aishwarya Subramanian took on the reviews editor mantle after Abigail. Um, and then quite a few people ended up somehow writing reviews for Strange Horizons. I can't, <laughs> I'm not quite sure how that worked. <laughs> um, but it worked by you showing up in their email inbox and saying <laughs> review for me. That, that's how it worked. Some of which were involved with infamous slap fights. Yes. Graham wants the mic. If we go back one, Graham. You, you preempted the point I was about to make, which is thinking of Chance and the, um, was it Lies of Lock Tomorrow? Chance reviewed the Lies, Lies of Lock Tomorrow, Tomorrow, yes, for Strange Horizons. And a number of people took exception to the review. Um, could someone dig up the link and post that in the Discord? That would be. <laughs> it was not a positive review. The internet didn't like it. Uh, I was on a work trip in Japan when this happened, <laughs> so I was in the wrong time zone entirely. Um. Fun fact, um, I was there and my, my stepmother received the first ever signed copy of The Lights of Loch Lamora. We were the only people at the signing because it was his first one, but she'd followed his blog. So when I then did hear about that, I was quite amused uh, by the level of drama. And also. <laughs> to my beloved partner, Nick, when, you, when we met in Borders, was that the book you were looking at when I came and found you? I think it was, right? Liz, microphone. Liz, microphone. Um, yes, so I did tell part of this story on Friday at your panel. So um, we had been corresponding for about a month or so because, yes, he um, slid into my inbox and asked me if I wanted to review for Strange Horizons. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a okay. Yep. Um, and so we eventually, after a month or so, Neil was going to be in Oxford for a wedding or something, and we I, and I said, oh, we should meet up for coffee or something. And Neil was adorably bumbling about that. Um, and so we agreed to meet in Borders, and he snuck up on me and kind of slammed a copy of Magic for Beginners that he was planning to lend to me, but he didn't even say hi or anything. He just put it down and <laughs> launched into some discussion about, um, well, discussion, speech, um, about a sandwich shop that I he was... I was nervous. <laughs> yes. But anyway, when he did sneak up on me, I was looking at a copy of Lies of Loch Lamora, which was taken to be that I was kind of trolling him about that... Yeah, maybe Slap a fight, bit. maybe a tiny bit. Yeah. What I like most about Neil is how enthusiastic you are about the things you're enthusiastic about. Aww. And it comes through in All These Worlds, Reviews and Essays by Neil Harrison, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is available for a very reasonable £15. Pounds. Um, but no, and you get a free copy of an M. John Harrison book that is much better, and as long as you buy it today. And, and the cover of this that. book is by an artist from Glasgow, and did you know that there's a Worldcon in Glasgow next year? <laughs> 
it's also organic. It's just, yeah. Do you have a role on the team? There's space in promotions. <laughs> Shall I advance the slide? Uh, Please. <laughs> yes. What's next? Oh, the Attic Lark Award. Yes. So this is another way we've had our, you know, Hooks. subversive influence. Uh, so I did 2000 and... I can Because the Clark Award, they call it the 2008 Award, but it's for 2007 books. So I can never quite remember whether I did 2006-7 or 2007-8. I think I was the 2007-8 Awards for 2006-7 books. That's not how time works. <laughs> Take it up with Tom Hunter. Um, and then... I can't remember what, and Graham was a judge at the same time. We had already met, so, your part of this story comes so in at Worldcon, right? We've met through Worldcon program. Graham would like the mic after Carrie. Carrie first. I, I just want to call a point of order here. Speaking as a representative of the previous generation of new young fans, and we were not the future of fandom, we were that bloody invasion who should get over themselves and stop, <laughs> stop being stupid and listen to our elders and betters. So having had in, you know, in our arrival, the whole sneering, we had then went on to obediently run the bloody cons, <laughs> work in ops and green room and everywhere else. Excuse me, third row, you have done all the posh jobs. <laughs> Your turn. Um, we do have a conning slide. I have a, I have a question. We do have a conning slide. Quote, why isn't Graham on this slide? He's How just he? down... He, Oh, good. The, the comfort <laughs> monitor is not quite in the right... Yeah, oh, good. We need to be... May, may I answer Neil's question of five minutes ago? About how you became... Yes, no, because again, that's well, not how time works. You can't go back. <laughs> and now Graham will I'm, answer You can answer the question I asked Graham five is. minutes ago, and you can answer it now, but you can't answer my question five minutes ago. John, actually. I'm moving at point nine of C. Um, so, I think I... Sorry. Hello, it's Graham here. I think I first encountered this group at a Worldcon planning meeting that Farah Mendelssohn um, convened in like March of 2005 when I first met Neil and Jean. In a room in Camden, right? In, in whatever the horrible holiday in Camden is. Um, and I think I judged the Clark Awards for the years 2005 and 6. Okay. And you judged it for 2006 and 7, which is the year and we, we shortlisted middle. have. Does that give a factual answer? And despite being in, locked in a room for several hours arguing about the shortlist, we remain friends to this day. Well, th this, this was the point I was going to make at the end. We have not had any group fallings out, I think. No major schisms yes. yet, yes. Oh. Tw tw 20 years, no I serious mean, fallings out. As, as my sister just said, <clears> you <throat> spend a lot... People have spent a lot of time disagreeing with each other, which says a lot to the cultural bit that that it hasn't been a fall, falling out, you know. Despite, <laughs> and, and now Abigail appropriately takes the mic. Well, <laughs> no, I was I, I, I was, was going to say I was going to say that the key, the secret, is that Neil, the linchpin of the group, <laughs> is also the one that everyone dunks on. But he is so tall, and and so so. <clears throat> powerful that he can withstand our barbs and that is that mm. is what holds us all together yep <laughs> i will say i don't know if there is a slide in here about who has worked on easter con committees there there's con running in general not easter it is it is coming up but that will that will help to answer i, I feel like mr hogg keeps looking at me <laughs> waiting for a certain nickname to be mentioned <laughs> captain rogad yeah how did you, you, you started that, I'm pretty sure. Why and how? Give, give, give. So wrong about them. So Neil has the nickname Captain Wronghead and we're going to hear why. <laughs> Neil, Neil has many nicknames. And but he's got Captain Wronghead because he's so wrong all the time. He's emblematic of the wronghead nation. He leads them to victory too many times, unfortunately. <laughs> I think it was just like in a restaurant and I was just aggrieved by some terrible take you had. <laughs> this is before we started calling them takes. This is just when they were just opinions. <laughs> uh, oh, Science Fiction Foundation. I'm not on this one. I've never done anything with the Foundation. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I wish it is. 
Uh, I had difficulty this one because I think I was the SFF secretary, but I can't actually remember when <laughs> or anything I did. Um, I would like to know, just a side note, I am for some reason at the centre of these slides, and I really think we should put Neil well, so in that position. I believe the design of these, the arrangement of these slides was, and the arrangement of names, was to facilitate the clustering in certain ways, in a consistent way through the slides, but take it up with Martin. But what that really shows us is that true, the true core, the true heart is Liz. I think that is, that is which the is secret. Why, which is why Liz is the one in the, in the audience with the microphone. <laughs> so Tom's take, which may Hulk. or may not have been posted on the Discord. Liz, Liz, was Liz, the, could Liz. Could someone read Liz, out the Soviet Liz, style? Liz, Liz. <laughs> this is a quote from Tom Anderson writing in 2004, five-ish. This is a quote from 2005, which I don't think I've ever seen. Well, I think Rekart's <clears> their fandom. Yes. It's a sort of Soviet-style diarchy. Neil is a president, but Gene's a party chair. Neil covers the online universe, whilst Gene works through dead trees. Since you, brackets, traditional fandom, see us primarily through fanzines and London-based meetings, it's not surprising that you're more aware of Gene, who's pretty much our ambassador to fandom. Neil, on the other hand, is a future king of fandom. I yep. think... You have performed the role more than Gene over the long term as the uh, conduit to wider fandom. I if Gene will job. move to Australia. I know. <laughs> yep. But as uh, Tom wrote on the 2nd of March 2005, Liz is a recurring extra added recently in an attempt to boost ratings. <laughs> so that's gone very well. She's, she yeah. reached regular status pretty quickly. Yeah. Season two. Yeah. I was like season seven when like the <laughs> contracts were coming up for renewal and some people started <laughs> demanding very large yeah. amounts of money. Anyway, Graham runs the Science Fiction <laughs> Foundation, so we have that as well. We've got oh. that at the moment. <laughs> oh yes, we do a podcast. It's called Octothorpe. It's all right. Pretty good. It's it's frankly amazing that there's only one podcast between us. I mean, I feel like this is how we have failed as, as young fans, that only two of us are podcasters. Yeah. I, I've been pointed out because what I did once record two, in, two interviews for a podcast, and that's as far as I got, but you know. I the, want the, oh, hang on, the podcast is how we failed five years ago. TikTok is how we're failing right now. <laughs> TikTok is for young people. We, we are officially not young people. <laughs> but most podcasters are definitely of our generation. Hey, Astrid. I keep trying to persuade, we, me and Hog were going to do a podcast called uh, Nerdy Boys With No Practical Skills, but uh, I haven't been able to nail him down to a recording date yet, so it was tricky. But hey, we, also, you have, if you have the ability to record a podcast, you have at least some practical skills. Painting you, miniatures is a very practical skill. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who didn't hear, it's funny when, is it? <laughs> uh, in that tone of voice. Um, I'm not allowed, I know I don't have practical skills because I'm not allowed to. Espana, Espana is, is it dangerous? Practical. Yes. I'm not allowed to use tools. I'm allowed to use computers okay. because I can't do any lasting damage to myself with them. And I really try. <laughs> Emotional damage though. <laughs> Maybe. Um, oh. And there is a live Octothorpe later today. Yes. To which everyone should go. Yes. Yes. I mean, if the was like it three o'clock? No, one thirty. No, one thirty. One thirty. Yeah. Alison will be a giant head. Um, Very much like Patrick Moore in Games Master. Yes. I hope. So Anna and I won TAF. So I went to um, Reno, where I met my wife Espana, um, and I was the youngest ever TAF winner, which is still true, which is weird. But I waited until I was twenty-one so I could drink. Sensible. And then Anna won it because I was like, you should rough a taff, you should rough a taff. And then, what's that? And yeah. John and, and Claire Briley. Uh. Yes. Um, but then Anna went. And um, Tamora Pierce was the guest of honor at Kansas, right? Yeah. And Anna is a big Tamora Pierce fan, so that worked out very well. And then I interviewed Anna. You can go and see the interviews uh, on YouTube. Uh, and um, so I then collated her trip report. So you can buy both of our trip reports for the low, low price of five pounds from uh, yes. procrastinations.co.uk. Yeah. yeah, I'm not doing John no bundles. convinced Anna to run so and then for context, made your the... book costs five pounds more than me and Anna's books put together. Yes. And yes. that is probably a fair reflection. And at the moment you get two yeah. books. 
We get the yes. John Harrison book as well. So you are significantly undervaluing yours, probably. <laughs> John, would you like to talk about the fan fund auction? <coughs> <laughs> Neil. <laughs> so, uh, Hog and I were a good team. I, and put the Neil, mic. I asked Neil whether he thought he should put a copy of All These Worlds into the fan fund auction. And he was like, well, what do I do to like, sweeten the deal? And I said, you should offer a Tuckerization in your next column so that whoever wins it can be in your next column. <laughs> and he seemed to think that worked less well with nonfiction than fiction. So <laughs> that was not the eventual idea. So you offered to write a 1,000-word review. Mike. Oh, you offered to write a 1,000-word review of, of whatever the winner wanted. It, it, on, this, on this card, it said, whatever item. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So like, and to be fair, there's quite a lot of scope here, and I don't, I still don't think the audience fully realised how good that was. I, I stand by, as uh, Phil Nansen helped me up with this last night, that he should review one of the later Gore books. So <laughs> there, there was a surprisingly fierce bidding war between your consortium. Yeah. And I had no intention of ever winning that. I checked, <laughs> I checked with Hoggy before bidding it up. <laughs> it's good. Um, but like, so but there I would have paid if I needed to. There are several... There was also someone else who was bidding. There yeah, was someone, someone else. else. It was wasn't bidding. just me and Emily. There was a it, third it, bidder. Um, sorry to the third bidder. It, it, um, it, it's... Jerry was bidding, yeah. Yeah. So but it the, ended this, at seven. This opens five. up. This opens up so many avenues, right? Because you could have Neil review all these worlds, reviews and essays by Neil Harrison, and that would have been very funny. But I did think it was probably too cringe because if anyone outside the joke ever saw the review, I worried it would dent your professional like but, reputation. So I thought that would be mean. And I thought, hang on, context here. I currently do not know. So John and Andrew won the bid. I yep. currently do not know what they have in store. There's so just there's so many options, the but we have landed Ooh. on an answer, I think, which is the one we were discussing in the pub yesterday. Are you happy with that hog? <laughs> okay, so nods. I don't know if you're familiar, and I don't think I might I might be wrong. But I think I'm right in saying you've never reviewed any of the copious Star Wars book canon. Not reviewed, no. Cool. I've read a few. Yes. The so. Timothy Zahn trilogy back in the day. Oh, okay. So we were tempted to get you to review the Timothy Zahn trilogy, but then we thought that's too good. Like there's too much literary merit to those books. <clears throat> and so, um, and then there's a Kevin J. Anderson trilogy called the Jedi Academy trilogy. So I hear. Yes. About how Luke makes Jedi Academy and it's all very good. And that trilogy is primarily why so many people were very upset about Luke in The Last Jedi. Is that, what, is that also one of the trilogies that got kind of memory hold and destroyed? Oh, they all did, yeah. No, no, yeah. None of this is canon. Um, because the new canon is too good for our purposes. Um, so anyway. So they had quality control with the new ones. Yeah. Like, okay. um, but we decided not to make you. So what we're going to do is there was also a, um, there was a, there was a four book chain of, of, of Star Wars X-Wing books. <laughs> written by Michael A. Stackpole, featuring Corin Horn, who is the galaxy's best starfighter pilot, detective, Jedi, and lover. <laughs> and he is, um, people, there are so many fans of the expanded universe who un, unironically called Ray and Mary Sue, but love those books, and I don't understand, because Corin Horn is the Mary Sue to end all Mary Sues. But we're not gonna make you read those books. What we're gonna make you read <laughs> Well, we're going to make you read. We're going to make you read I Jedi. At least it is still reading, so that's... It is reading. We're going to make you read I Jedi by Michael A. Stackpole, which is a sequel to those four books, which takes place during the Kevin J. Anderson trilogy. So it is chock full of things that will make no sense at all. <laughs> it's got Luke Skywalker. It's got the funny creatures from the Thrawn trilogy that block out the Force. It's got Star Destroyers. It's got... Corin Horn being the best Starfighter pilot, Jedi, detective, and lover. I feel like you may be giving me too much context already, and I should not it's hear any more about it. No, I'm going to stop now, but I'm looking okay. forward to your review. The, so I, the other aspect is, where is this review going to be posted? And I'm talking to Strange Horizon staff right now when I say this. <laughs> I'm going to provide it directly to the bidders, and they can do with it as they wish. <laughs> well, what I want to do... You can print it out and stick it in the back of your copy if you want. No, I'm, I'm aiming higher, okay. which is, I don't know how much a page in Glasgow 24's <laughs> souvenir book is going to cost. 
but they sell ads. <laughs> and so... <laughs> and we, and we, we do need the money. <laughs> Have you got your membership? Um, so, um, so yeah, uh, we, but we've got, you know, we've got options, we've got plans. It's, it's all in hand. I'm very happy. It's the best £75 I've ever spent on anything. <laughs> and I mean, it's almost certainly not. So it's only £32.50 each, which is such a bargain. I genuinely don't think anyone understands how much of a bargain that is. <laughs> Should we move on? on. <laughs> there we go. Come running. Yes. Who wants to take this one? <clears throat> I mean, I, I don't think I'm on this slide. I well, don't think I should be on this slide. I, you know, I've been <laughs> peripherally program. involved in some program uh, work, but that's about it. If that counts, then I should be on the slide. I think most of the others have had relatively, and it's specifically Worldcon and Eastercon. I've chaired other cons, um, but in terms of those, I've had lower level any, positions. Any all con running counts here? I definitely feel like you should be on this slide. It would be the only other slide I'd be on. However, I was sitting in the third row that day, so I, don't, I didn't have to do any of those posh jobs to get here. <laughs> I, I've, I've run Filt Cons, and I, I ran a Harry Potter Con. Um, not quite <laughs> single-handedly 12 years ago. I and mean, he also helped to keep the production of this book on track, and John did the typesetting, so that could be another slide. I have a challenge for you all. Um, okay. as, a, as a member of proletarian fandom, as opposed to the <laughs> intelligentsia we had, see here. The last EasterCon, I co completed my uh, EasterCon bingo card. I have worked every single damn station at an EasterCon. I thought I'd miss newsletter, but I actually remember I did in fact help with it somewhere back in the, in the early 90s. I expect to see every single one of you who is a regular Easter Con attendee in my green room carrying a drinks tray. Because, and, damn it. And if you have any time later today, they desperately need you right now. I, 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 went, I, worked, I worked green room in 2007. I remember because I was very hungover. I, I have done some green room work. I've done some gophering. Yeah. So, oh, you know, John, I've, I've done John, a bit. And you, obviously, you have done newsletter. Yeah. yeah. John know. gets an exemption because when John was 12 <laughs> <laughs> or something like that, there was a con in Cambridge which had a serious incident which involved all the committee Flashing having lights. to go away and deal with the incident. And we left John, age 12. <laughs> And Abby Brown, aged 11, to run the convention. So John yeah, gets a pass. The rest was, of you, however. I was a duty, it, was my third, it was my third convention. I was 18, and me and Abby were the duty committee members, which was weird, because we weren't, we weren't on the committee. But the committee was very busy. Um, that was also the one where, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the chap who um, is in charge of Green Ronin uh, Publishing, which is a games company that makes Mutants and Masterminds. And we had a panel on world building and we had all been having a great laugh in the green room and then he turned up and we were like oh he might be serious and then at the end of the panel when he said i was really hoping to talk about la goats with lasers on their heads we were like oh no we have missed a trick here which uh, one was this uh, recombination in cambridge in 2007 oh uh, yeah i was i was uh, uh, on the committee uh, not on the committee i was on the committee of the filk side of that con mm. i did work on that con as well and i, I do remember it's like okay well the filk side's separate so we should be fine while <laughs> Yes, I, I thought, I suspected it was that one. I, it was my, that wasn't my, but the first convention I worked on at all was uh, at another Unicon back in 2002 when I was, thir when I was actually 13. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think quite a lot of us have had some roles within convention organisation, although often on the programme side. Our, clearly our most senior con runner on the grounds that I think she's been to Smofcon more than the rest of us put together, would be Liz. <coughs> I've been to Smofcon once. Really? Yeah. That's what, that's what we just said, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> I do claim seniority, I think, because I think I'm the only person who's been a Worldcon division head and not quit. Yep. <laughs> Which I think means I'm more sensible. <laughs> I'm trying to cultivate a reputation for resigning. Is I think, yeah, I think, that, yeah. <laughs> 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 
Uh, it's just, it's very tedious, and I always join with a sense of great hyper-focus and excitement, and then realise that it is very tedious, and then, um... I mean, I've quit a world con, it's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be fair, if I hadn't, if I hadn't quit from the next, like, so I was working for Levitation, if I hadn't quit, I probably wouldn't have had time to typeset all these worlds, reviews and essays, by Neil Harrison, which is available <laughs> from all good bookshops for £15. Let's make. I was like, you can quit a world con? <laughs> no, no, no. You, you can't because I've seen you answer questions and you always answer yes. Hence, moderating. Uh, <clears throat> brief addendum to this. I, I mean, it is framed at the moment as world con and east con con runners, but yeah, I mean, we've got Emily running Vilt cons. You guys have run Caption in Oxford. I don't know if other other members of the con kind of. Other members of Third Row have run other conventions, but yeah, so they're kind of our tendrils go. Well, and it Liz should run an Eastercon, though. It is, it is about time there was a Third I Row. I moved 6,000 miles to avoid that. <laughs> in Thailand. Liz, you could be in charge of hybrid. Hybrid. Yeah, yeah li to Liz lives in Thailand for anyone who doesn't have that context. Which is, um, as but she should still be running the Eastercon. Are there any good con venues in Bangkok? I mean, do we have any geography slides in this presentation? No. no. Didn't, didn't we also so, establish the other day when we were discussing this that Eastercon doesn't have to actually be in the UK? There's nothing in the bylaws to Bangkok. say. What bylaws? There's no bylaws. <laughs> well, so, so there's bylaws no reason, there's no reason why it couldn't for example, happen in Bangkok one year. Yes, because we've got, we've got Liz and Nelly lives there now, so that's two. You've got two people. You could do it. Um, but like, in terms of geography, so there is a concentration in Wallington and, and sort of uh, in, in South London. South London. South London. And then there's a concentration in Newcastle upon Tyne yes. and Sunderland, uh, which is where Ian lives. So if there was a Tyne and Weir slide, it would be me, Nick, Neil, Espana, and Ian. And Janet, yeah. And Janet. Is Janet on the slides? No. No, boo. Um, but, you know, I think in little yeah, Newcastle Con, there's a Oxford. Hilton. Oxford. There's an Oxford lot still. An Oxford it would have party. a great games room. And, you know, there's not just South of London. We have sort of other parts of London as well. <laughs> well yeah, um, we have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we've taken we've sort of various areas of London. Moving into position. <laughs> The pincer movement on Oxford is almost complete. Speaking of the fancy, fancy people. That's what I was going to say. So you, you've done the posh jobs. I think this should be Hugo Award finalists with my ex-MPC <laughs> member hat on. You had the chance to proofread the slides, John. Oh, I refuse. That sounds like work. So you trust his typesetting. <laughs> Just checking. The he, paid, he paid someone else to proofread it. <clears throat> The, um, there was an awkward conversation when it came to how much to invoice Neil for my typesetting, and Ian uttered, Neil uttered the immortal words, you have to charge an amount that you might be willing to do it again next time. Uh, so there might be a next time, but that will be intriguing. But yes, so Abigail won a Hugo. So did Graham. You got what? Give him the mic. Give him the mic. Graham Slide. Won, won a Hugo and got slapped by John Scorsese. I got, which I of got those booed do you by George R. R. Martin. Which of those do you treasure more? The award is more permanent. Oh, and, and quoted the West Wing in my acceptance speech. I can't remember if you did that. Who did you quote? The, 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 no, the I quoted the West Wing in my tweet after I got the award. <laughs> no, but the, the, the SF Encyclopedia was like a, a big block of cheese free for any and all. Um, which, yeah. That was, that was the achievement. Yeah, so, yeah, Graham of the Science Fiction Encyclopedia, Abigail won as fan writer. The rest of us have not won. Yet. Uh, Strange Horizons. Um, Strange Horizons, well, Octothorpe. I was nominated for Octothorpe. Yes, they were Octothorpe. And, and, and Liz and John were nominated yes. for Octothorpe. John has also been nominated for Journey Planet. Wise. Yeah, um, because if you want Tim nominated for a fanzine, just stand next to James Bacon for long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so like that is that is kind of tricky. Uh, Octothorpe is the one that I got nominated for that I'm like more feel like I had more agency in. Um, but I was staying with Nick, I was staying with you and Nick when we got the news. So I was like, I've just had an email from Chicago that I'm not allowed to tell you about. And Neil just looked at me and went, Well done, and then went, and then went to bed. Uh, and it was good. Um, but yeah, 
I found out we were house hunting and I got a text from Alison saying this one we have to keep secret and I had not checked my emails yet because uh, we very nearly told everyone about the BSFA award non by accident uh, <laughs> due to discord permissions um, but yes that was good oh and Ian Clark is he on yeah he's yes, on there just artist. can't see him in, yes Ian's an artist including his work for Glasgow 2024 <laughs> world <Tour. laughs> Which it's available in the dealer's room. Yep. So, have you never been nominated for Best Fan Warrior? Nope. We should probably fix that. <laughs> not, not. That <laughs> is, this is a dangerous plan. word. <laughs> that is absolutely the plan. We, we need to rectify that. I don't think. That. Please, don't please everyone, there is nominate no plan. this man. Yeah, I don't think we're allowed to make plans. Please, if you take anything away from this panel. Doesn't that get you taken yeah. off the ballot if you make plans? <laughs> if you so, take anything what I would suggest. So don't, don't say things like we need to fix that because the word fix <laughs> is this oddly loaded. If you yeah. take anything away from this panel, please take away that we do it, not, we it, are not organised enough to plan any of yeah. this. But what I yes. would suggest is that you go to briardonbooks.uk where Neil has a blog and sometimes <laughs> reviews appear there and also places that LA Review... Was it? LA Review of Books? It is the Horizons. LA Review of Books. And, you know, Strange Horizons and all Perhaps those so. sorts of things. So this is what I would suggest. And then vote, and then nominate Neil. <laughs> may, may I suggest that if, if you were going to make a plan of that kind or even hinted it, it would be spectacularly stupid to do it on a videoed and recorded <laughs> live stream. <coughs> Just I, saying. I don't think... Right, okay, so... Uh, I mean, it this was is, John. I apologise to anyone, anyone watching who's involved with Chengdu Worldcon. <laughs> but I don't think I understand the organisational structure of the Chengdu Worldcon sufficiently to be able to influence it nefariously in any meaningful way. And there is a regular segment about this on our podcast <laughs> where we discuss the organisational structure of Chengdu and boggle. You can't... Uh, you can't... still open. You, can't you shouldn't nominate me anyway this year anyway, because I didn't do anything last year. It's this year I'm doing stuff. Yeah, it, it's the organisational structure of Glasgow that we should be worried about. Yes. And speaking yes. of Glasgow... <laughs> But Neil needs a rocket. Abigail should breathe my life. So Martin put this on this slide because he was quite tickled by it. Because this is a quote from Paul Cornell in, I guess, 2006-ish? Seven. Seven. This lot revolve around the fan critic and Clark or Judge Graham Slight like the planets revolve around the sun. If we go to the next slide. <laughs> Just want to correct the record on that one, I guess. Uh, no, I think yeah, we only. We, we all know. Might you the might universe. Know. John, sorry. You're loud, but not. You know. The universe revolves around the Earth, not around the Sun. Exactly. So. I'm a space physicist. I think we've only got one more. So. Go back. Go back. Go back. Yeah. What? Um, Martin has been selected with that because it's missed out the part where it's um, if the planets continue to take the piss out of the sun or something on those lines. <laughs> <laughs> so so it, that part's accurate. But may I supply one other bit of context, which is I think that was a Paul blog entry after the 2007 Chester EasterCon, where a bunch of us went out for what I still remember as one of the most hilarious meals of my life in an otherwise deserted curry house. And the narrative hook for this was Paul was talking about reading Thomas Pynchon's Gravity's Rainbow and being unable to get past the bit about 15 pages in where there was an adenoid gland the size of St. Paul's Cathedral that had to be felt, fed with, with bales of cocaine. And it, I don't think many of us were like particularly drunk or otherwise intoxicated, <laughs> but it just devolved into a, a meal where people glands. repeated that word, <laughs> repeated that word. Are you sure that that meal wasn't in the 2010 Worldcon? Because I did attend a meal with Paul Cornell in which he informed me that I hate goodness. <laughs> Paul, Paul is, Paul is one of our Paul. many patron saints as a row, yeah. I think. Yes. But, so, to ask a serious question, mm. are you surprised that you are the first third row East Con guest of honour? In that, I am astonished that I was a guest on at all. Yes, very much so. Um, but I think, I, yeah, I would have pointed at Liz, probably. I'm going to find a job. 
I'm going to point at Graham. Liz would have pointed at John. <laughs> and Graham said it's like the last scene of Reservoir Dogs. So I was, I was also, so, so you, you said a minute ago that you um, didn't really do much last year in terms of like writing, but you've done quite a lot this year. <laughs> did the, the did false the, appeared, the yes. false appeared justice. <laughs> did being invited, so is it a coincidence that you're a guest of honour and you've made a book and you started writing again? No, not even slightly. Yeah. So that without this, would you not be writing your new column and things like that? Almost certainly. Yeah. It was a, it, yeah. It was a kind of encouragement slash authorization to be very self-indulgent and self-publish a book. But also, like, you've got your new column yeah. at strangehorizons.com, which is called... Depth of Field. Depth of Field, which is very good and everyone should read it. So that's also that's, a thing that's, that's come yeah. out of... Yeah. yeah. It's good. So thank you to the committee for inviting me. You were so, you were so, when you told me you'd been invited and you weren't sure whether to say yes, I was like, say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes. I, I am, my role is the yes man in that I tell other people to say yes. <laughs> while simultaneously saying no a lot. <laughs> but yes. Can we just go forward to the last? So, chance is, chance was um, a writer based in the northeast of the US that we got to know pretty much online only. We met her in person once or twice. Um, but she was on the mailing list with us in the third row. She was in all the discussions um, and very sadly passed away, what, this time last year, slightly before that? Um, so two years now. She died in the fall, and I think it was in 2021. That's what I remember. So we just wanted to acknowledge her because she's can't obviously the member of the group can't be here, and uh, her joy in life was slap fights <laughs> and commentating on them, spectating on them. So uh, yeah, wanted to acknowledge that. So thank you, Charles. And that's our last slide. Do you understand the third row now? <laughs> In a way, only therapists do, to be honest. <laughs> I was just seeing if there was any questions in the Discord. Um, we are. We are. The time. Um, there is not, not sure. but you should 100% go back and read that. Uh, Me again. Hello. This is actually addressed to John because he raised a question to which I know the answer. Oh no. Chung do de jie gou yang ge and an jiao tong chu de ping dan yu wen si ju ju. What? And what was the question? Chengdu de jie go yang ge an jiao tong xie de ping deng yuan si ju zi zi. Ah. Good. Did um, achievement of the convention to carry speechless John. <laughs> <laughs> and that seems like a wonderful point to wrap up. Can we all thank the third row? Uh, I'll note that Carrie is sitting in the third row. <laughs> you are the future of fandom, Carrie. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. <laughs> Thank you so much to is Meg for stepping in. Th this, is one, this is one for the uh, old school angel fans. Is that it? Are we done? <laughs> <laughs>